Good morning. And welcome to the service of Holy Communion on this uh, not not too warm but but beautifully sunny long weekend. Uh, welcome all of you. Welcome all of you who are joining us online as well. Um, I'd like to draw your attention uh, once again to the announcements in our bulletin, which I've just draw. There, there. Um, just have a, a handful of things. Um, I'd like to remind you that this Thursday at 7.30 at the Burbs, the pub just over there, we're going to be doing another session of Praise and Pint. Um, that's led by Cheryl Teeter, but I'll be there too, and, uh, and we hope to see you there uh, for good discussion. Um, on Tuesday at uh, 2.30 p.m. in the double classroom, the, the Sunday school classroom downstairs, we'll be having a planning meeting for our Christmas Bazaar. I'm so excited because I've never seen a Christmas Bazaar here because we've, we've been dealing with COVID. Uh, but we're finally going to sit down and uh, talk about what we'd like to plan for this year. Um, if you have any questions immediately, you can speak to, to Moira uh, or to Is Minx here? Okay, or to Minx if you if you want to, uh, and and they will be able to answer some immediate questions. But other than that, we'll see you uh, on Tuesday if you're able to come. Uh, on August 20th, we're going to be having a community barbecue that's uh, in support of the Western Ottawa Community Resource Centre, um, and we are looking for volunteers. So if you would like to volunteer for uh, the barbecue, uh, then please contact Danielle McKenzie. Her contact information is on the announcement, her phone number and her email, uh, and you can ask her if, what, what, if and, and what you can do to help. Uh, and then finally, um, I just wanted to mention that um, for the next two weeks, so that's the 7th and the 14th of August, we're going to be having some visitors with us. Um, the parish of St. John's March is getting their roof repaired, and while that happens, they can't use their church building. So they're going to be coming to worship with us at our 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock service, whatever they feel like doing. Um, and also, too, their, their priest, um, the Reverend John Martin, will also be joining us. Uh, Reverend John is going to be preaching next week. I'm looking forward to, to hearing his sermon. Um, and then he will be celebrating at this service, the 10 o'clock service, on the week after the 14th. Um, and so I know uh, that you will make all of them feel welcome. Uh, I, I know it's sort of hard. Sometimes there are people you haven't seen in a while or people you haven't seen without masks, and it's hard to tell uh, whether they're one of our people who just haven't been in a while or whether it's one of theirs. But maybe it's just best to be welcoming to everybody. Hmm? Sound like an idea? All right. And then finally, last but not least, um, I was asked by Archdeacon Sally um, if she, if, if we would read uh, or, or uh, send a little uh, letter out of thanks that she sent. Um, last week at, the, at this service, the 10 a.m. service, we gave her a small token of our esteem and our thanks uh, to all her years of service in this parish. And she has sent the following letter to us. Dear St. Paul's folks, Thank you very much for the lovely gift of watercolor supplies you gave me on Sunday. I will give, it will give me hours of pleasure and I will think of St. Paul's often as I use them, especially since I often use them at St. Paul's in our art group. As I think of you, I will remember how warmly we were received into your midst for the dozen or more years of our time there. You are a gathering of people with many gifts, hospitality being only one. My wish for you is that you may find joy in using those gifts as you follow Jesus' way. I expect we will see you from time to time as we are still nearby. Thank you and blessings, Sally. I invite you to stand for our opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old set with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. The word of the Lord. Now, the psalm appointed for today is Psalm 107, beginning at verse 1. And this is found on page 852 of the Book of Alternative Services. And we're going to be reading the psalm responsively by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathers them out of the lands. Some wandered in desert wastes. They were hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in their troubles. He put their feet on a straight path. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. For he satisfies the thirsty. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And all the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of Christ. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. After last Saturday, this gospel passage has meant more to me than at any time in my ministry. I am now looking at it with much more agency, a critical eye, and understanding more than ever. Why, you may ask? My godson Michael, age 42, married with three children, ages 13, 10, and five years old, died suddenly in his sleep without any cause or sickness. I had actually exchanged Father's Day greetings with him two days earlier, little knowing his life would be demanded of him two days later. Till today, we, his family, friends, and his entire community remain stunned. He had just bought a new single home and moved in in February 2022. Last Saturday, the day of his funeral service, his wife told me that they had plans to go grocery shopping in Montreal that day. Oh, how fleeting life is. But what was comfort, comforting to all of us was the fame he achieved in such a short time 
in his life. Listening to the tributes paid to him, the readers recounted how he started a church, how he looked for jobs for young black students who have just completed university, and also how he counseled young people in the community. As if he knew how short his life was going to be, he gave of himself. He used his God-given gifts well. So now that God has called him, we take comfort in the fact that he answered God's call to service. He has been called home to go and give an account of his work here on earth. And instead of the statement Jesus made, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, rather, our Lord will welcome him saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. You find this in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse 23. Michael planned for his future, a future with God being part of it. Planning for your life is important. Let it include today and the future with God being part of it. Like my father used to tell us, if you are not planning for your life, then you are planning to fail. And our God does not expect us to fail in life. No, he expects success from us. That is why he tells us the parable of the talents. What do you do with the gifts he has given you? Success does not mean greed. Success is when we achieve enough to meet our needs. It's good to work smart, to become comfortable. But we do not need to overfill our bars and forget the needy. Before Jesus even narrated the parable, he warned us, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in only the abundance of possessions. Our lives mean more than abundance of wealth. It is how we use the abundance. I am not preaching against the abundance of wealth, no. But it is how we use that abundance. Even the psalmist in Psalm 144 verse 17 praises God because God grants abundance. It is a blessing to have abundance. The issue is how you acquire the abundance. Do you hurt anyone along the way to abundance? How many lives do you have to destroy to get to abundance? Look at the rich in our current economy. They maintain their wealth by exploiting the poor. As soon as the poor gets a bit of relief from a bit of a pay increase, the rich will raise the alarm. There is too much money in the economy, too much money in the system. There's inflation, there's hyperinflation. And the government panics. 
and clamps down with interest rates and more interest rates. The poor return to where they were before, but the rich keeps piling on the wealth. In the economic news yesterday, I almost fell off my chair when the newscaster said that the corporate CEOs made 320 times what the average worker made last year. 320 times. What? I exclaimed to myself. Later, I settled down saying, in a world where there is unfairness in employment and remuneration, even within the church, this should not come as a surprise. Look at the rich man in the parable. When his band got too full, he broke it down and expanded it. But he did not have to do that. He could have given the excess to the needy, and it would have been a blessing to him. What a waste. Pulling down the band and rebuilding it. Waste of time, money, resources to enlarge the ban. He could have lived very well on the size of that ban. A theologian quoted St. Augustine, who said about this rich man in the parable that he did not realize that the stomachs of the poor were much safer storerooms than the ban. Jesus tells us that since our life belongs to God, we should not strive to be rich, but strive to be rich towards God. Can our riches lead us to eternal life? This should be the question we should be asking ourselves. Our life is given to us by God and our life is taken from us by God who has authority to cast into hell. Our life is not given to us for the pursuit of an abundance of possessions, but rather our possessions have been given to us for the pursuit of the work of God. We should be concerned about what treasures we have in heaven. Is that not the reason why we're here this morning? We're here this morning because we want eternal life. What we use our world for is what is important. We earn currency to spend in heaven if we exchange our abundance for heavenly currency. If the abundance is towards us, then we are people to be pitied because the psalmist in Psalm 49 verse 17 warns the rich saying, for they will take nothing with them when they die their splendor will not descend with them. Amassing wealth in itself is not wrong where we know when enough is enough and we invest in God's work and not for one's own greed whilst others suffer from hunger. When we amass wealth for our future, but we are never content, then it becomes a disease, aiming for more but never enough. One preacher called it a destination disease. You never get there. You will never be able to say that enough is enough. T. 
dearly beloved, let us be content. Let us learn to discern the difference between needs and wants. Wants and excessive wants make people so discontent that they are losing their marriages, kids, families, health, relationships, joy. People are not satisfied anymore. And this lack of, this lack of contentment shows our lack of gratitude to God. Acquiring money, acquiring wealth is not wrong, but it's how you do it. Who you hurt in the process and what you do with that wealth. Saving for your needs is not wrong, but it is the love of wealth that is wrong. And it is the root of all evil. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us be content. Amen. And now to God who is able to strengthen us according to the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the bond of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers of the people. The response for today's prayers are, we thank you, Lord. Let us give thanks to God our Father, always and for everything. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of creation, in faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, in faith we say, we thank you, Lord, for our daily food, for our homes and families and friends. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord, for health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord, for all who pursue peace, justice, and truth. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For St. Paul and all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ, in faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For your tender compassion and your healing power to those distressed in body, mind, or spirit, we bring before you today those named in our bulletin and all who are in our hearts. For the hope you bring to those in despair, anxiety, or injustice, 
for the comfort you give to the grieving, for your grace in every circumstance. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For those called to serve your church in positions of authority, in particular, we ask that you would guide those gathered at the Lambeth Conference in Canterbury, especially Shane, our bishop, with wisdom and revelatory knowledge of your purposes and grace to be manifest in the 21st century. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. We pray for the ministry of St. Paul's Church, the clergy team and staff, Stephen, Alana, Nash, David, Darlene, our wardens, and all ministry leaders and their families. Lord, bless them with the bond of peace, the unity of fellowship, and zeal for the kingdom of God. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. For the congregations in Canada, our own, and our sister churches, Catch the Fire, St. Mine and St. Caris Coptic, Ottawa Mandarin Wesleyan, and Pathway Church. Lord, we ask for your transformative grace by which kingdom truth is established, your empowering grace by which kingdom faith is active, and your enduring grace by which all are motivated to fulfill your calling. In faith we say, we thank you, Lord. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his arising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved us as ourselves. Sorry. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please exchange wood.
God, our sustainer, accept all we offer you this day and feed us continually with that bread which satisfies all hunger. Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel. And through your servants, Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. My brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God.
body of Christ, the bread of life. Lord of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Shed for you. Not a price shed for you. Thank you. 
I invite you to stand. God of grace, we have shared in the mystery of the body and blood of Christ. May we who have tasted the bread of life live with you forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.